Farm coming to you from our expanding garden area. You recall last year this was a wreck and I've never been a gardening person and I was really down in the dumps. I felt horrible. Um, we had the year before had some success. We had got a bunch of free plants, threw together our cedar planters real quick. I'll put a link below to the video that we did. If you want to build some quick planters, cedar planks that you can get in any big box store or lumber yard are the way to go, and we needed to go quick. Then last year, um, things started, we had building here and things were going on and the garden got neglected and we had weeds my height. And those of you who know, it was Jurassic Garden. It was just something. So I'm a just add water kind of person. If there's anybody like, me out there you'll understand what I mean by I want it now and Mr. Blue Jeans and I are a perfect match because he can take six months to figure something out whereas I'll take six seconds and I'm waiting if I take six minutes <laughs> so it's been a good balance for me because he kept telling me look you can do this we were too busy last year and I always take everything on in 100% way and I just felt a failure at gardening but I've had success this year, success with my seeds that I didn't have last year because I rushed it. Uh, success with transplanting them and getting them bigger, which I didn't think I could do because last year I killed most of them. And success in enlarging the garden, getting the rocks down to make it look better. I'm an aesthetic person. If it looks like a trash heap, I don't want to be there. So thank goodness we got the tractor because bucketing them in here was something and I got all of them in up to where Mr. Blue Jeans and I are building the new bigger planters, deeper, uh, longer, and we have a, a large one and we have a skinny one. I want to do root vegetables in the skinny one. I was hoping, we had tilled, you can see that weedy area back there, that was tilled about a month ago. Didn't have time to get to it, but the weeds did. So I was gonna plant my melons out there. I must have about 45 starts. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with those yet. But I thought today I'd come and get some of the plants in. We've gotta get them going. We're gonna probably have, oh, I'd say five more of these style planters coming in. And I, uh, I'm excited about planting. I am. I brought some of my favorite books. I'll bring you over here to the, the planting table and show you what those are that have helped guide me through, besides all of you. You guys telling me I, I'll, I'm going to get it, it's going to come to me, keep going, that looks good. You don't understand how much that means. It really does. It kept me going. I, I believed you. And, and now we have Swiss chart that's monstrous. I've got beautiful garlic coming up. I am excited about gardening. So let me show you some of those books that have helped me along. And if you're new and like me, a bit of a camo thumb, brown and a little bit of green, these books might help you too. Let's go take a look at them. Carrots love tomatoes and roses love garlic. This has been great for companion gardening, especially with the planters. I wanted to know how to companion garden to help myself bug-wise. One of the problems I had last year was um, cabbage worms, but somebody told me about BT, that worked great. However, my dilemma last year was, remember, no time. So while I made a concerted effort to come out for about a week, after that it fell apart and the worms, I think I got one, maybe two cabbages out of seven or eight. So the worms won, but not this year. Um, Square Foot Gardening, I love this book. I don't do as Mel Mix because it's, for as much as we have, it's expensive. I did do it in Wisconsin. We had a small, small area and it, things came up great. So his Mel Mix is wonderful, but I'm not using it here. But I love how he teaches how to plant and, and intensely plant, which is what I want to do. So this is one, and then The Vegetable Gardener's Bible by Edward C. Smith. This has been fantastic. He really gets into it and, and shows you and explains the, the plant itself to you. All kinds, look at just on arugula. So love this one. And then a couple of other ones that I love to use and are always by my side. And if you're new, you're gonna want these, I'm telling you. This is the Backyard Homesteader Seasonal Planner. It tells you everything from when to clean out your barn or your pond, when to plant grains in your field. I mean, this is huge. This is, there's, you know, future things, planting grains. It tells you what time of year you're going to do it. it. gives you an area to write in. I love this book. Not using it as much yet because we haven't broadened our scope, 
but it's coming because we got sheep yesterday and two baby chicks hatched. So here we go again. And then my companion for forever is week by week vegetable gardeners. This also tells me what to do with my vegetables, when to start them, when to plant them, uh, how to plant them, uh, wh when to put in compost or fertilizer, maintenance, when to harvest, because I don't know. <laughs> I, I am always blown away by all of you when I'll ask a question and you're just like boom, 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 and I want to be that person someday. But I'm really looking at this garden as being my first official garden. All the other stuff was sort of practice runs, getting there. Uh, so I have a really long way to go. And these books have been just instrumental. And I, we have a lot of books, but these are the ones I go to every time. And the last two, if you're new, I'm telling you, for sure, vegetable gardeners, for sure. And then the seasonal planter, if you just have no idea what to do, like me. So here are some of the things that are gonna be going in. My precious peppers, because I love to make fermented hot sauce. Uh, I've got more Swiss chard, more cabbage, because we love our sauerkraut, squash, tomatoes. I found a recipe for a copycat Heinz ketchup that I have enough tomatoes. We're gonna have, I'm gonna do the recipe and we're gonna share that recipe. Um, just all kinds of things. Basil. I started out basic. A friend of mine, Jamie, had said to me, look, Nikki, the, um, the regular hybrid vegetables aren't horrible. They're a great place for a newbie to start out because you're almost guaranteed success. They're hardy. They're going to grow despite me. All good things. So I, I, can't, I, I got quite a few of those, but I still am an heirloom girl and always will be and super organic. So I want to transition, but I need those successes. It's just how I built. I need a success in order to continue on. One other thing I, I want to share with you, and you guys know this, you're going to roll your eyes, my hoary hoary knife. This is my gardening genius. I adore this knife. It has measurements if you need to measure down a certain amount to plant a bulb or what have you. It has a very sharp serrated edge and then just a, a duller smooth side. I use this knife like a trowel. I, I use it all the time. It comes with the pouch. I adore this knife. And lastly, my other gardening tool, and I'm never without these. I need a little case horn, don't I? Maybe I'll sew one one day. My little Fisker pincher, I call them pincher scissors. I cut, I had cilantro that could have bolted, so I cut some of it yesterday and I just dried it. And this just gets right in there and cuts things nice and clean, and I love these. So I'll put links down below for all this stuff, but I know that when I watch gardeners' videos and I see a tool or, or a book or, or something I'm interested in, I want to know about it. So I thought I'd share that with you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to consult my carrots, love tomatoes, roses, love garlic, but I'm going to set the pots out. I'm going to set some out over where the other not finished raised beds are going to go so I know where those go. And then I'm going to start to plant. Some of the planters, things I put in didn't come up, so I'm going to replant. And I'm really excited about today. So I wanted to share that with you and have you come along and watch how it goes. Let's get started. So there is one thing Mr. Blue Jeans and I forgot to do. And it was something that I wanted to add to the metal planters, and that is PVC pipe. I want to put in six cut bits of pipe, three on each end, because I, I think I'm getting my nerve up to maybe even try a little bit of cold framing and or some hoop housing. If I have bugs, I was thinking about putting that white covering, and I wanted to have a way to permanently be able to take it in and out without having to shove it in the dirt because I find things fall over like my electrical conduit that I really love to grow peas or cucumbers on, um, it tips over. So we staked that last year. But I was thinking about it, and I'm sure plenty of people have done this, but I, I thought we've got some PVC pipe left over from another job. I, want, I just want to cut it and put it in here and be able to put in my hoops. So I may actually do eight. We have a two by four here to, to help support the weight of the dirt. Um, and then that way I can have my beds a little more versatile than what I'm used to. So unfortunately we filled the beds <laughs> with dirt before I remembered to do that. So before I can do any of the fun work, I'm going to dig out the holes, get this one going, and the next ones that Mr. Blue Jeans builds, we'll go ahead and put the PVC pipe in it right away. 
I'm gonna get my one of my favorite garden shovels, which is a shorty shovel. Use my hoary hoary knife and get this area dug out. All right, my little PVC post holders for hoop house or cold frame or what have you are in. And moving forward, the planters, as I said, will already have these inside, but fortunately it was an easy mistake to, to correct. So now on to the canyon. 